Welcome to the Author to Authority podcast. I'm your host, Kim Thompson Pinder. And I just wanted to let you know that we're going to be taking a break from recording new episodes of the Author to Authority podcast for the next few months as I work on some uh, new projects and uh, things to build out the business. So I want to invite you to listen to this replay. I've gone back through uh, the best episodes of the last couple of years, and we will be repost, uh, po- reposting replays for the next few months. So sit back, listen, enjoy, and have fun with the Author to Authority podcast. Welcome to the Author to Authority podcast. And today we are having a very interesting conversation about launching your book. And I know I'm already going to enjoy this conversation because I'm talking to someone in the industry. So we can dive deep into this topic today. So I want to welcome Alex Nazaro. She's the founder of Axel Author Services, an agency providing authors with turnkey support in editing, book design, and book marketing. She's worked with over 100 authors in the United States, Canada, Canada, (laughs) Europe, and Australia, and has experience in all genres, including nonfiction, memoir, fiction, children's books, coloring books, and journals. A graduate from Concordia University in creative writing, Alexa is also a member of the Independent Book Publishers Association, the Alliance of Independent Authors, and the Writers Union of Canada. That is a very impressive list. And welcome to the show, Alexa. Thanks so much for having me, Kim. So just before we get into the really good stuff, uh, this is your first time on the show. So I would love for you to take a few minutes and just introduce yourself, share a bit of your story. You know, how did you turn to writing and now in some ways, publishing? Well, so I always tell people when I meet them, or at least authors, that I'm a writer first and foremost. It's always been my passion. It's always been my love. I studied it in university. So, you know, you spend three years workshopping different manuscripts. I mean, you only do that if you really genuinely enjoy (laughs) writing, (laughs) which is me. I absolutely love writing. I love reading. What I did a few years ago was I decided to launch a business communications firm as a freelance copywriter, basically. And yes. it was it was fine. It was good business. But obviously, there was that creative side that was missing until the day that one of my clients who had hired me to do website copy said, by the way, I've got this ebook. I'd like to set it up somewhere. Can you help me with that? And then just kind of like a light bulb went on and said, you know, Maybe there are other people who need this as well. So I sort of started just attracting more and more authors who, for one reason or another, had decided not to go the traditional publishing route or they had tried and they weren't getting through those gates and and whatnot through the gatekeepers. And it just I just really, really enjoyed the creative process because it's such a I mean, a lot of these manuscripts, whether it's nonfiction or fiction, they're deeply personal for the author. And so when you're allowed in, so to speak, it it can be a really nice, creative, trusting collaboration. So I just enjoy those experiences. Wow. Wow. You know, most people don't realize, but I fell into publishing. (laughs) You fell in. Yeah. Now, if you've been listening to the podcast long enough, you know that I was told at the age of seven that I shouldn't write, carried those words for 30 years. Uh, You know, then about 12 years ago now or 13. I don't know. I lose track of time. Um, I started writing books. Uh, 2015, my son's getting married and we have two cars. We're driving by faith. I don't know if you've ever driven a car by faith before but that's where the car is no longer repairable or at least it's not worth repairing anymore but it's in such bad shape and you don't have the money to replace it that you get in the car and you pray that you make it to where you're going to go you do your thing you get back in the car and you pray you make it back home again (laughs) okay a lot of praying (laughs) and um i was on a freelance site 
because while I am very crafty, I'm like great at writing. Do never ask me to draw anything and don't ask me for my opinion on color because it's just not good. Mm -hmm. uh, and just the little God thought, you should check out writing jobs. Yeah. And within a year, I was bringing in enough business that I decided I wanted to become a publisher. I, I was hooked. And because I had done everything on my books myself, like I took the long route. I had no yeah. money for courses. I figured out everything myself. I Googled stuff. You know, if there was a $7 Udemy course or a $10 Udemy course that answered one single little stupid question. You took it. Yeah. So I, you know, within a year, I was able to actually start a publishing company because I knew how to do everything to create books and, cool. you know, slowly started bringing on other people. And, and now, you know, we're sort of a full scale publishing company, not marketing, but producing the books. Sure. And uh, yeah, I fell into it. It was never my goal in life to become a yes. publisher, but oh. I am so glad that it happened. Yeah, no, it's really, it's just so much fun to be part of that side of media. I just, I just love books and they're definitely not losing their relevance at all. There are more and more books being published. So this is just a reality and that's mm -hmm. something that every author has to deal with, but it's, it's a lot of fun. I, I love, I love what I do and I love the authors that we work with and every author is, is really different. And so mm. it, each partnership is really unique in that way. So it's, it's fun. I mean, there are some authors, we work with them for three, four months. Other authors were with them for a couple of years or more. It all depends on their needs. And so we customize, but each one is really special. Oh, I'm, I most definitely agree. And I don't know about you. I mean, I predominantly work in nonfiction books and books of thought leaders. So I, I have felt like I have gotten a university education just by working with these clients because they share all of their knowledge with me yes. and then we put it in the book. So I don't know about yeah. you. Have you kind of experienced that as well? Yes, absolutely. I mean, we do work with nonfiction. We also work a lot with memoir, which I always find, even though there's nothing necessarily, there's no data necessarily to understand or knowledge to consume, but you you learn about different people's life experiences, mm -hmm. which in turn can serve as models. So it's so cool. I mean, we worked with a woman who decided in her 50s she was going to go work at a refugee camp. And I mean, how can you not learn from that kind of life experience? Mm -hmm. And so I love memoirs. I find we learn a lot from memoirs. I've learned a lot about children's books and how to craft a, a really engaging children's story. So a lot of authors will come on board thinking, well, a children's book, it's so much shorter than a regular book. It must be easy. And honestly, it's really difficult to pull off a good children's book. So yes, I've definitely learned quite a bit as well. <laughs> so let's just switch gears here, Alexa. And we want to talk today about how to organize an awesome book launch. So what we're going to do is I'm going to let you loose to share some things and then we'll do some back and forth and talk about it. Sure, absolutely. Um, so the first thing I always like to preface when I tell authors about launching a book is that launching a book is important, but it's not the only thing that's going to predict your success as an author. If you're self-published, mm -hmm. if you're holding control over everything, you're not with a traditional publisher where they give your book that window of like three months, you know, 90 days. And if nothing's happening, well, we're going to move on to the next one. As a self-published, as an indie author, you have so much more control. So even if you don't have the perfect book launch, it it doesn't mean it's over for you. You haven't missed it. I mean, you can, I, I work with authors who sometimes say, I wrote this book. I published this book like two years ago. What can I do to bring it back to life? There's no, there's no expiry date, I guess is what I'm saying. Yeah. So that's really, really important for authors because I know there's a lot of pressure to stand out, to sell copies, but you know what? The window never closes unless you decide to close it. So that's the first thing I always like, I always like to mention. And the other important thing is also you have to think long term because I have a yeah. lot of authors who live in that book launch honeymoon phase, I guess we can call it, where, oh, everyone they know is buying a book. They're leaving awesome Amazon reviews. You're getting all these accolades and pats on the back. And then without Nothing. even this. Yeah. So then you go through this period. Sometimes it lasts four weeks. Sometimes it lasts eight weeks, depending on how large the author's network is. 
But then eventually, yeah, it's going to start falling flat until you, unless you maintain that momentum. And mm -hmm. so that's the other thing that's really important thinking book launch, but also thinking beyond a book launch. Mm -hmm. So that's just really important advice. And I always say that because I know, especially in this industry, there's a lot of FOMO. There's a lot of fear of missing out and timing is everything. And, oh no, I forgot to create a Facebook page, but I already launched my book and I did some, I did everything wrong. And so what am I going to do to undo all of that? And it's, it's okay. So I always like to tell authors it's okay. It's going to be okay. But if we're really looking at launching a book, so I would say no matter what genre you've written, I think mm -hmm. there are always some cornerstones. So I do still think that an author website is imperative. It's an important element because we have seen stories where people have this great profile up on a social media site, Instagram, they're getting all this engagement. And then what if suddenly some one of these platforms, they decide to change their algorithms, they they play on the back end and now all of a sudden your posts aren't being seen as much or whatever the case might be. Or you're in Facebook, Jill. Yeah. That's yes. I know. Oh yeah. That's, that's, isn't that fun? So exactly. <laughs> and, and so, but your website is always yours. Nobody can change the rules of your website. So it's yes. really, it's really important to have an author website. I would also say it's important at least at the beginning, to have some social media presence. Mm -hmm. And I say some because there are a lot of authors who come to me saying, okay, I have to be everywhere. It's all about book talk, right? It's all about TikTok. I also have to get on Instagram and post nice images. I've got to be on Facebook and engage in conversations, LinkedIn, et cetera, et cetera. And yes, if you have the, the capacity and the bandwidth to maintain all of that, sure. But you also have to be realistic because nothing is worse than spreading yourself thin. And then all of a sudden everything collapses because it's really hard to keep all of that up. You're nodding. So I'm assuming you obviously know that it's just, it's really difficult unless you've got a team in place, it's going to be really hard to maintain that. So I always tell authors, Pick the platform that makes the most sense for you as well as your book and maintain that. You're going to find yourself so much further ahead yeah. than trying to be everywhere and really not being anywhere. So those are really so, the two. Yeah. No, I was just going to say, you know, when you look at each social media, you know, yeah. if you want to get that social media working for you, you have to hit mm -hmm. sort of certain levels. Yes. Right. Yes. And they have to see a lot of consistency and oh. it doesn't matter which platform you're on. If you're not consistent, they mm -hmm. don't reward you. No. Now you have to be consistent in different ways on each platform, but you know, it's yeah. the consistency that gets you rewarded. So you're, you're better off to take six months to a year, focus in on one platform, get it big, get it good, yes. get it strong, have Absolutely. a good following on there. Absolutely. And then, and then open up something else as opposed to trying to be everywhere to everyone and do nothing for nobody. I totally, totally agree. Exactly. And it's, and so that is always, those are to me two cornerstones that are important. I think if we're looking at nonfiction in particular, I think a press kit is very handy. I think, and the media nowadays is not just the traditional, you know, newspapers and magazines. We've got bloggers, we've got podcasters. So these people, if you feel that your book has a topic that is of relevance mm -hmm. to the media, that media would find interesting, a press kit is really, really handy. It doesn't have to be super fancy. You do want it to be professionally designed, highlighting the the topics of your book highlighting your talking points what are your areas of expertise some professional photos so do invest a bit of money so that mm. you have some nice author photos not just you know the one that i don't know was taken of you at a wedding and then everyone else around you is cropped out i've seen those i've seen those more often than i care to admit so invest a little bit of money and get some good author photos and think and about a media kit yeah and it doesn't have to be like super duper expensive. It really like find doesn't. A, find a find a local photographer. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Or call your local college. Yes. Find a and photographer. And get a photography student, student yeah. who Absolutely. wants experience, who might even do it for you for free. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes. Just for the experience and for their portfolio. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And the other thing I would recommend just very quickly with photos is 
have a couple of wardrobe changes so that you're not using, you're not wearing the same outfit everywhere. So it, it seems like a silly piece of advice, but it's really worth it. Just have a couple of wardrobe changes. So if you're a nonfiction author, I really, really think a media kit is important. Now, leading up to the whole publication, this is where you want to start sharing the progress of your work with your people. So if you've got a decent mailing list or you know what, it doesn't even matter about decent. I, if, if you've got a mailing list, especially a mailing list of subscribers that would find your book interesting, mm -hmm. start sharing, start mentioning your book and not just four weeks before it comes out. I'm talking six months before it comes out. Yeah. And you'd be surprised at how many people just love being a part of someone else's creative process. It's something that I always I'm always reminded of, and even my authors have to sometimes be reminded. I know you don't consider yourself a big deal, but people like to know, where do you write? Where do you get your inspiration? Mm -hmm. How far along are you? So these are all things that your subscribers would find interesting. So keep them up to date on your progress of your manuscript. Do a cover reveal. Cover reveals are really nice as well. You can already reveal the cover. The book isn't published yet but you can get people interested. So that is definitely something. I would also share snippets of the book. Yep. So think about that. If there are some things that you can extract from your manuscript that could really pique someone's curiosity while also speaking to the greater themes of your book, include that, share those. I think those are really important leading up. And if you don't have a mailing list, if you're just starting out, share with your personal network and get those people talking about your book. So even if you don't, oh no, I don't really have a mailing list yet. That's okay. It doesn't mean you don't have anyone to whom you can talk about the book. Talk to the people around you and let them know. I also recommend leading up, get some good endorsements. That's a really, really vital thing, especially for nonfiction. So if you've written a book on real estate investing and you have contacts, you have decent relationships with some influential thought leaders, even if they're not like super TED talk speakers, that's okay. Get them to read the book and even more importantly, get them to share the fact that they've really liked their books, like liked your book, mm -hmm. sorry. So gathering those testimonials and endorsements are really good. In terms of book reviews, those are always, if you're a fiction author, I think some book reviews make sense. For instance, if you're writing children's books, Definitely, the fact of the matter is librarians, teachers, bookstores, they really value reviews for children's books. So that is something you want to think of. I, But I would say definitely for nonfiction endorsements, testimonials from thought leaders are definitely, they're just going to be more valuable and include them in the book, include them on the back cover. If you've got a real superstar, take that excerpt and put it on the front cover, but leverage those, definitely leverage those. I would also consider if you have a good mailing list, set up your ebook for pre order. If you're using Kindle Direct Publishing, set up your ebook for pre order. Get some orders coming in. If, if you think that you've got a decent number of people who would be interested, it sure doesn't hurt to try. So that again all builds up that anticipation of actually your book launch. So th those are some of the big things. I would also recommend getting a street team, getting some, mm -hmm. uh, getting a team of people. They don't have to be influencers. They don't have to be thought leaders. They just have to be people with some kind of a tie to your book who agree to promote your book with you. So of course they need to read the book ahead of time. You wanna get them on social media, talking about your book. The only thing with the street team to be aware of is it does require a bit of coordination. It requires a bit of control because you don't want people going off, perhaps saying the wrong things. So mm -hmm. there's more of an effort involved, but it can, it can also make a difference for sure is I, I would really recommend a street team and then as far as the day of your book launch, not necessarily the day of, but I really recommend just doing a book launch event. So mm -hmm. this can be an in-person event if you're already, for instance, sometimes I work with coaches and they're giving workshops or whatever. So they already know that they can gather yeah. people at a physical venue. Make that your book launch. Get photos taken. Get video clips taken of this. It's, if you're using the right angles, it can really make the event look 
awesome looks like a not to be missed event and that is all those are all marketing assets that can then be shared on social media and get people who attended the event to share them on social media if you're somebody who has a following a little bit more global or beyond your neighborhood let's say you might also want to think about a virtual book launch invite people to a virtual book launch do a reading invite panelists so primarily for nonfiction authors or even memoir authors who whose books explore certain themes, get some people on a panel during your book launch so they can offer some valuable information so people who attend don't feel like they're just attending to have a book promoted. It's all about the value of the information you give. So definitely, definitely do that. And I would also recommend building relationships with local booksellers ahead of publication. So yeah. as much as we love Amazon, the fact of the matter is bookstores are important. They give you an opportunity to meet people. People always love meeting authors. They just do. It's it. They just do. So don't underestimate that. And again, it gives you really nice photo ops. So just getting some nice book events going. So when your book is published, you can go back to that bookstore and say, hey, my book is published. I'd love to do a book signing. And honestly, in my experience, the vast majority of booksellers are happy, more than happy to have authors come in and do a book signing. So it's really important. The only thing, of course, with bookstores is you want to look professional because the fact of the matter is there is still a stigma attached to self-publishing mm -hmm. and indie publishing. We have come a long way. There are really great associations like the Alliance of Independent mm -hmm. Authors, as you mentioned, Kim, the Independent Book Publishers Association. There are so many resources but at the end of the day, booksellers, librarians, they can still be a bit snobby. They can still assume, and frankly, rightfully so, because I still get authors coming to me. They've published their book elsewhere. They'll show me their cover and I'll say, ooh, maybe we need to up the, up the quality of that cover. I mean, it honestly, yeah. as a side note, it blows my mind to what degree uh, books can still look pretty bad when they're independently published. So just if you're going to start pitching to bookstores, librarians, and even the media, make sure all your packaging looks good. All of your marketing yeah. assets are top notch. You know, you're, you're so correct there. Like, you know, people say uh, that they don't judge a book by its cover, but uh, yeah, <laughs> people won't read your book. They won't absolutely. even open your book to look at the table of contents unless they like the cover. The cover. Oh, absolutely. Oh, and especially nowadays, because as an indie author, you're not going to be immediately stopped in all the Barnes and Nobles and all the Indigos in Canada. I mean, you just won't, which is a whole learning curve that I find a lot of authors go through. They just kind of assume bookstores are waiting to stock their book nationwide. It's so it's so important because all people have now is that little thumbnail on Amazon or maybe yeah. a slight bigger image on your website or social media. And that is going to be the basis for their decision. So, yeah, you need to you really need to be professional. I mean, this almost goes without saying, but sometimes I find myself having to repeat that. Don't invest in book launches and book marketing activities if you don't have a quality product. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I wanted to go back to a couple of the things you talked about. Um, when you talked about promoting your book way back when, even six months before, one of the things I found effective, now I didn't really have an email list, but I had a half, half decent uh, social media and following a network. And one of the things I did, which really generated a lot of interest was I actually let them vote on some things. Oh, yes, absolutely. The vote, so the polls had, are great. You know, I had three or four different covers. Um, you know, I had a few different versions of the subtitle. So I just, I let them vote on all of this stuff. First of all, because it was great market research. Yes, I agree. And ultimately, at the end, I was able to create a cover and a subtitle and all that. Even the author to authority, I played around with, I don't know, I spent a year playing around with a whole bunch of different stuff, just yeah. putting out ideas out there, letting people comment yeah. on it and, and vote on things. Yeah. And so, you know, when you go to launch your book, if people have invested in the book. Absolutely. By voting on different things. Yes. Then, you know, it then they want to buy the book because they're like, hey, 
like, yeah. I helped design the cover, yes. right? <laughs> very, very good point. Really, really good point. And again, it just sort of speaks to the whole relationship that you are ultimately mm -hmm. trying to build with potential readers for your book. And that's really what it's all about. The big challenge, of course, for some authors is, ooh, I'm, I'm not ready yet to talk about my book. And that's really a mental hurdle, which is completely understandable yeah. as a writer myself. You know, if your manuscript is still in progress, why do you want to start talking about it? But you, you have to make yourself vulnerable to a certain degree because yeah. you need that time. Again, as I said at the beginning of this, this episode, I mean, it's not the door doesn't close. But if you want to leverage a good book launch, you need time. So don't don't yeah. start talking about your book four weeks ahead of time. Yeah. Well, you know, the other thing, and this is something I've got to tell my clients, like you cannot be so emotionally connected to your oh, book. Yeah. Because it's almost like your baby, like it's like your Absolutely. it's like your child, right? Oh, like totally. and someone says bad something bad oh, about your kid, gosh. like hello, right? Oh and, yes, and you know, because like I predominantly work with like nonfiction thought mm -hmm. leaders stuff like that, so they're using their books as marketing tools. These are not necessarily a memoir or biography, no, no. It's, or it's like a business card. It's an elaborate business yeah. card. So, you know, I say to them, I'm like, you're using this as a marketing tool. Yes. You cannot be emotionally attached to this yeah, thing. I agree. And, I agree. And, and if everyone's telling you they want this. Right. Then listen. Yes. I don't care whether you don't. Okay. You've got to be able to own it. Okay. So if you absolutely yeah. hate it, that that's a different story. Yes. Of but, course. Uh, you know. If it comes down to two choices and you're really leaning towards one, but mm. the other one is good too, and your audience is telling you they want number two. Yes. Yes. I agree. I agree. The other thing, actually, sort of an extension of that is, you know, when you launch your book, you're going to get people making comments about your book, even leading up to book launch. Oh, you know, I read the book. You know, chapter four everyone will always have an opinion. So at some point, hopefully by the time your book has already been designed and laid out, you have to disengage, you have to let go. Yes. People will always have their opinions, but don't let that deter you from launching with confidence. Unless of course there's some horrible inconsistency or like really bad mistakes, which hopefully wouldn't happen if you've done all the right publishing steps, right Kim? So <laughs> your book will not have, your book will not be those problems, but you are always going to find something saying, oh, you know, in this chapter, I thought you would talk more about this. Well, you didn't. And that's okay. You can talk about that in your next book. Well, that, that's what I tell my clients too, right? Because like, yeah. we get about halfway through the process and all of a sudden they want to start adding stuff to the book. Oh my gosh. And, and I look at my just, I have two words for them. Yeah. Book two. Book two. Exactly. And you they look at me and they go, but I, no. Book two. Book two. Yeah. Exactly. The other thing I wanted just to touch base on that you talked about is those endorsements. Yeah. So sometimes you may not have someone who is famous by name, but that's yeah. not the only kind of endorsement that you can get. If you can get someone who's famous by title, so their name might not be recognizable. Like one of my clients is an Olympic coach. If I mm -hmm. said his name, it wouldn't be recognizable yeah. to right. you. Right. Right. But he's an Olympic coach. Yeah. Exactly. So his title is impressive. So if you yes. have a doctor, if you yeah. have a CEO, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you have someone whose title is impressive. Absolutely. Absolutely. That works as well, because oh. sometimes we don't always know someone who's famous enough. Oh, yes. I, I, yeah, absolutely. Kim, thanks for pointing that out because I just wanted to be clear on that. We're not asking you to go out and get like top celebrities to endorse your book. If you have a connection, great. Although even there, I would be careful. And this is sort of goes into the whole influencer marketing, you know, authors will get slammed with offers. Oh, look, you know, maybe I can, I pay a certain amount and this person will talk about my book. But if she mostly talks about makeup, is that really the right move? Probably not. So it's not just about having anybody talk about your book. It's about having the right people talk about your book. Yeah. So an Olympic coach, if that's more relevant to your topic, then I mean, then a bigger name, obviously, you, you know, you want to measure all of that. So you make the right decision. But yes. So if, for instance, the name isn't recognizable, but their title is include that, it, even if it's a long title, include that in the endorsement excerpt. Absolutely. Good point. Yeah. So those were kind of the two things. Now we're getting close to the end of the time here. So I'm going to ask you the question. Sure. 
if everyone's li- if you've listened to the podcast before, you know which question is coming up next. Uh, this is the question I ask every author who's been on the show. So here we go. What was the good, the bad, the ugly of either A, publishing your most current book or B, publishing your first book? So I actually published my own novel, which is something I actually don't talk about much, only because speaking about bad timing, I published my young adult fiction book literally a month before I gave birth. So this is a bit of advice I don't give. I Oh, you're having a baby. No, no, we're going to wait until after the baby's born. So it's not, it's something that I've had to, I'm starting to re-embrace the book and I do want to revive it, which again, brings me back to one of my earlier points. It's never too late. I But I sometimes joke, I, I should hire myself as a writer just to give myself the time to finish this stuff. But I would say that when I published that book, it was a really interesting learning experience. I loved the learning curve. Obviously, the fact that I do this for other authors really speaks to the fact that I enjoyed acquiring all that knowledge myself. But I will admit that after it was published, I had a friend of mine say, oh, did you notice that this character's name changes halfway through the book? I said, what? Come again? They said, yeah, yeah, you didn't notice that Claudia becomes Kim? I said, oh my gosh. So yeah, so needless to say, there was major panic, a weekend of major find, replace, all that other stuff. And that was really kind of ugly. I felt mortified. But you know what? A lot of other people never even noticed, Notice. but she did. But there was no way I was going to let that slide. A little typo I can let slide, but a character name change? No, <laughs> definitely not. So that was the ugly, the bad and the ugly all wrapped into one. <laughs> well, you can just you can just blame the pregnancy brain. There you go. There you go. Oh, that's a good reason. I'll 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 go with that. <laughs> the hormone just made you like <laughs> change the name unintentionally. Who wouldn't want to do that? <laughs> And I mean, Kim's a great name. So they're all good names. They were all good names, but I just (laughs) couldn't. I really, I said, no, no, no. Just please tell me you're joking. No, no. Look, as of chapter, whatever, it changes. Oh my gosh. (laughs) Yeah, there you go. See, it's all there. There are always things, but you can recover. If you're an indie author, you can recover from everything. Yes. And I think that's the main point of this is that, you know, as an indie author, you have unlimited chances. I agree with that. There's no like, you know, there's no expiry date. I totally agree with that. Bring back to bring back to life your backlist, as we call it. You mm-hmm. wrote a book a few years ago. You can still bring it back. You can always bring something yeah. back. So th- that is that to me is one of the wonderful things about being an indie author yeah. is the creative control, but also the literal control over your book and. Yes, yeah. I totally agree. I totally. mean, if you're if you're working on the second book in the series and the yeah. first book did okay, yeah, this is an amazing time. Yes, to bring back the first book absolutely. while you're working on the second oh, book, absolutely. right? Because Ab- absolutely, absolutely, yes, exactly. And of course, a lot of writing gurus, and I do agree. Certainly, publishing more than one book, whether it's nonfiction, whether it's fiction, is a really good move. If you're a nonfiction author, I'm sure you can take certain elements and you can expand on them across different books. So I definitely agree with that. And that is a chance to revive your backlist, to revive some of those books that you published a couple of years ago. And maybe the timing just wasn't right to do a proper book launch. (laughs) (laughs) So Alexa, our time is basically up. Uh, Do you have a final thought? How can people connect with you? Absolutely. Do you have any freebies that you give away? So definitely, I mean, so everyone is welcome to check out our website, www.axelauthorservices.com. And that's Axel, two A's, X-E-L, authorservices.com. Please also email me. I always love talking to authors. It's so much fun. My email address is Alexa, A-L-E-X-A, at axelauthorservices.com. We always offer free consultation slash discovery calls. And if you're still at that manuscript process and you don't know if your manuscript's any good and you want a sample evaluation, well, we do offer that for a promotional price as well. And there's more info on our website about that. Awesome. One final thought. One final thought. You're not alone. You're not the only indie author, which means there's a lot of help and support out there. It also means there's a lot of competition. 
But if you believe in your book strongly enough, other people will believe in it too. You just have to be consistent and find those people. That is awesome. Thank you so much. This has been Alexa and Kim on the Author to Authority podcast. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the very next episode. Bye now. Bye-bye.